Now for the AFX Commodities update. AFX Commodity Trading Indicators were all in the green in the week that ended June 21st. The total value traded was up 2.69%, while the number of contracts uh, traded went up 83.10%. Uh, uh, for more now, let's uh, bring in Michael Martin, Portfolio Manager at AFX. Hello, Michael. Great to have you. Hi, Ladi. Good morning. Good Thank morning. You me once again. It's always yeah, a so, to yeah, so give us a, a summary of what uh, transpired in the week uh, ended Monday, uh, June 21st. Uh, thank you very much, Ladi. Uh, so if you look at the table in front of you, uh, and it essentially gives a summary of the total value of transactions traded on the exchange, uh, you would see that the total value of transactions went up by a factor, uh, not percentage now, Ladi, uh, went up by a factor of 2.69 uh, from around 298 million naira to close the trading week at 1.1 billion naira. Uh, the total number of contracts traded on the exchange also went up by 83.10% from around 15,173 contracts to close the trading week at 27,781 uh, contracts. The total number of deals uh, that happened on the exchange also went up by a factor of 4.4 from around 10 deals to close the trading week at 54 deals. Uh, the AFX Commodities Index uh, also went up by a factor of 16.98% from 393.23 points to close the trading week at 460 uh, points. The AFX Export Index also went up by 12.67% from around 150.08 points uh, to 169.09 points. Uh, with regards to the volume of transactions, uh, volume of contracts traded on the exchange, uh, there, was a ge there was generally higher volume traded across board, with the only commodity trading lower this week being maize, which traded from around 13,220 contracts last week to close to this trading week at 1,833 uh, contracts. Uh, with regards to price on the exchange, like you said earlier, Ladi, we essentially saw grain uh, across board. Uh, so the price of maize went up by 22.07%, uh, gaining 4, 000, uh, more than 4,000 in the contract value to close to trading week at 23,000. 431 naira per contract. Soybean went up by 6.38%, gaining more than 2,000 naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 33,615 naira per contract. Paddy rice went up by 9.12%, gaining 1,884 naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 22,534 22, naira per contract. Um, Sorghum went up by 32.97%, uh, gaining uh, 5,770 naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 23,270 naira per contract. Um, cocoa went up by 1.35%, gaining just about uh, ju just over 1,236 uh, naira in contract value to close the trading week at 92,736 naira per contract. Uh, then we have ginger, which also went up during the week, uh, gaining 22.91%. Uh, gaining 20,125 uh, naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 107.98, uh, 107,987 naira per contract. Uh, Sesame also went up by 4.76%, gaining 902 naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 50,406 naira per contract. And last but certainly not least, we have cash unit which went up by 3.80%, gaining 3,530 naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 44,684 naira per contract. And last but not least, we have the fair trade exchange traded commodity, which essentially remained unchanged in the week under consideration, remaining at 14,220 naira per contract. And as we always say, if you want to know more about the commodities market, you can always go to our website, which is www.apexnigeria.com. And if you want to get involved trading commodities, whether or not that's spot contracts or fixed income notes or product, you can always download our app, which is available on Google and iOS. Quite a bullish week, Michael, I must say. But then, can you explain the reason behind the price hike in commodities seen on the exchange? Uh, thank you very much, Shemazir. Um, so to answer that question, uh, one thing essentially comes to mind, and that is liquidity. Um, so at every single point in time, the prices that we report uh, on this commodities market update, uh, we essentially want to make sure that they are as truly representative of what is going on in the commodities market as possible. But that is, that is usually the case when you have the same levels of liquidity that you have on the exchange uh, um, in comparison to the same level of liquidity that, levels of liquidity that you have on the open market. But therein lies a problem whereby you don't have as much liquidity on the exchange. And what that means is that you don't have as much volume of transactions happening on the exchange vis-a-vis -vis what you have 
happening in the open market. So what tends to happen is that that tends to uh, begin a, a slight divergence in the prices that you have on the exchange uh, uh, from the prices that you have in the open market. So what we have tried to do by virtue of the fact that we're not having that much liquidity on the exchange in comparison to the open market is to give a, uh, a greater weighting uh, to the types of transactions that are happening in the open, uh, in the open market and the prices that are currently uh, available or obtainable in the open market, give more weight into that in, uh, in comparison to the prices that we have on the exchange. So the weighting that we have with this new methodology is a ratio of about 70 uh, to 30 percent with more going to the open market. And it's essentially so that the prices that we report at the end of the day are as truly representative of the prices that you have in the open, in the, in the open market. All right. Uh, talk to us about your input financing program. You know, how well the, uh, the wet season input disbursement has been going uh, since it started uh, this season. Um, thank you very much. Um, so the input financing program has been going, uh, disbursement program rather, has been going significantly well. Uh, we have seen a bit of uh, progress since, the, uh, since we started. So we started the input disbursement program uh, in the last week of May. Until date, we've reached approximately 18,000 uh, more than 18,000 farmers. If you do a simple approximation of uh, 1,000 farmers, I mean one farmer to an hectare, that's essentially 18,000 hectares that we've already covered. Um, it's also the case that the averages that we're doing with our field extension officers in the market nowadays sort of range between 600 um, to 800 farmers every single day. Uh, but the imbued disbursement program has not been without its challenges. Um, so the first, the first of which would be uh, the delayed rainfall that we, uh, the delayed rainfall. So we usually expect rain to have started in the, in the month of April. Uh, we didn't see that rainfall start until the month of, uh, uh, until, the, uh, until the latter part of the month of May. And what that essentially means is that you can't essentially, uh, you can't give inputs to farmers if rains haven't essentially started. So that has sort of limited the number of farmers that we've been able to reach out to, to the number that I reported, which is about 18,000. Had the rain started earlier, we would have, we would have had higher numbers, uh, uh, pushing 30,000, 40,000. Um, but our field extension officers, they are doing a lot of hard work. There's a lot of hard work involved in the entire process. And we are optimistic that the numbers are going to improve significantly in the coming weeks. So who is eligible for, for this input from AFEX and what is the process? Um, so essentially any small older farmer within the operational regions, uh, uh, and, and that would essentially be within the northeast, uh, and north, uh, eastern, I mean, northwest and northeastern part, part of the country, um, and, our, and our process essentially start, stands on three pillars, uh, the first of which would be data, uh, the second of which would be profiling, and then the last of which, uh, maybe not least importantly, would be financial inclusion. Uh, the process essentially starts when we uh, instantiated uh, 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 an interaction with the small older farmer, and then, we essentially, uh, and then we essentially register them by gathering as much data about the small older farmer as possible, and this involves uh, their name, their location, their farmland, uh, and a couple of other data points. Uh, from there, we then profile the farmer to see uh, what essentially his impute disbursement needs would be over the course of an entire commodity season uh, before we then eventually disburse uh, imputes to him. Uh, before the disbursement does happen, I must say that the farmers are sort of organized into cooperatives for better accountability and administration. And then this entire process is uh, we leverage technology throughout the entire process. So from the process of the farmer data gathering to the farmer profiling, and also to the last input disbursement, and, and of course the eventual, the eventual repayment of the inputs, we essentially leverage the proprietary technology that we use uh, at the firm, which is of course our workbench uh, platform. So this gives us an end-to-end -end visibility of the entire process uh, from start to finish. All right, but, but what has been the reach and impact so far? Um, so the reach essentially has been, um, for example, this, this year alone, we've already done uh, approximately 18,000 18, farmers. Uh, the goal is to get to as high as 150,000 farmers. Um, but the impact cannot really be measured until, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, the farmers harvest uh, the, the crops that they've cultivated, and then you know, they repay back the loans that, uh, that has been disbursed to them. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've been able to reach out to more than 100,000 farmers. Um, so what I can tell you that has been the impact, as we have reported at several times during the course of this uh, um, uh, show, has been that with farmers that have been under the AFEX network uh, for a significant period of time, um, they essentially experience very little to no hunger, and they're essentially food secure. And so what we have also seen is increased productivity due to the quality of inputs that we give to them on a year-on-year -year basis, and by extension also an, uh, an, increase in their, uh, an increase in their livelihood and income. So what that essentially also does is that it increases their, it increases their purchasing power, essentially raising them out of, uh, 
out of poverty. So that has been the impact in the past couple of years, uh, in the past couple of years, and we also expect the same to continue with this year's MP disbursement program, seeing that we are also seeing, uh, looking to reach out to a higher number, a higher number of uh, uh, farmers. Now, there are definitely plans on repayment. What is AFEX putting in place to ensure this is going efficiently? Um, thank you very much for that question. And that's a very important question uh, to answer because the loans are only as important as how well they are repaid at the end of the day. And I have alluded to how historically we have seen a 98% uh, repayment rate for all the loans that we have disbursed to small older farmers. There is a reason why that is the case. And that's, and, that's because of, and that's because of some of the structures that we have put into place to ensure that that repayment does happen. Uh, the first of which would be we have warehouses situated at, uh, at localized uh, uh, places that are close to these uh, small older farmers, which essentially helps us facilitate a last mile um, interaction with the small older farmers. What this essentially means is that it's easier for them to repay uh, the loans knowing fully well that they won't have to travel far um, in order to in order to repay the loans that they've already been dis uh, that has already been disbursed to them and um, the second of which would also be uh, remember i mentioned that the farmers are usually organized into cooperatives and this what this essentially means is that it's easier for our field extension offices to monitor uh, whatever is going on with the small older farmers and it's also from an accountability standpoint because a farmer is less likely to default um, on a loan, he, if he's working within a cooperative as opposed to if he's working with one, um, uh, with one if we're working with just one single uh, small older farmer per time. Another infrastructure that we've also put into place or structure that we've also put into place is we have field of extension officers having monthly meetings with the small older farmers that we disburse loans to um, to sort of get an overview of how the cultivation is being, uh, how it is going and what exactly it is that we can do to help them improve uh, pending when they eventually uh, pending when they eventually harvest. And then lastly, at, at harvest, when they eventually bring these products to, uh, to, uh, to the exchange uh, for transaction, we essentially offer them competitive prices, meaning that if the price of maize at harvest is around 150000 in the open market, what you would essentially also be seeing uh, on the exchange in transaction with small other farmers is also around the same 150000 meaning that farmers essentially get competitive prices uh, for whatever uh, volume of commodity that they bring to the warehouse in repayment of the loans that has been disbursed to them. Well, Michael, uh, just before we, we let you go, now, if um, um, someone like Laddie and I would want to, I mean, we've seen that bullish trend in the market this week, and hopefully it's going to continue in the new week. Um, if Laddie and I, even though we are not farmers, we want to invest in this uh, commodities of course market, so. how do we go about mm -hmm. that? Um, look, uh, Laddie. Uh, and Chimezie. I've been talking about this for the better part of the time. Ladi said last week that you bought ginger, but me and you know that ginger. Don't mind it. Just, just a handful um, of ginger. Really. But look, it's, it's, better late, uh, <laughs> but it's better late than never. But to truly answer your question, there is an easy way for you to engage in the commodities market. We've more than made that easier for you mm. by the fact that you have the technology, you have the app on your phone. You can essentially create a profile, log in, and then buy a commodity. It's essentially as simple as you buying credit on your phone. So I don't have to be. So what you then do is when you I don't have to be a farmer. I don't have to be a farmer to you know uh, you don't, you don't play have to in be this market. Trust mm? me, we don't discriminate. Anybody <laughs> can buy. We don't discriminate here. We don't discriminate. Anybody can buy commodities. Just download the app. Uh, figure out what commodity that you want to buy. Maybe by virtue of the research that you've done, depending on the seasonality that is currently in play. And then you just buy that commodity and then wait and hope in appreciation of the, uh, of the value of the commodity that you've bought. But we don't discriminate, like I said. Anybody can buy. Laddie, go and buy. Thank you. Uh, and hopefully that will help hedge against inflation. <laughs> well, I, I like the way Ginger looked this morning. Yes, you know. will. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, maybe you are hoping to you know, of, put you your know, money just, in there. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Michael, for sharing your time with us uh, today. Thank you. You're welcome, Shemeza. We'll take a moment. We'll be back.